بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا چینل ٹوڈے وی ول کنٹینیو وتھ ڈزیزز آف ایکسٹرنل ایئر سو لیٹس اسٹارٹ سو انفلمیٹری ڈزیزز آف دا external artery canal that's what we call as otitis externa and this otitis externa is divided into two main groups one is infective group and the other one is a reactive group this infective group is again divided into subtypes depending upon the offending organism involved so we call it as bacterial group fungal group and viral group and this infective group as a whole we have already covered in previous videos and the links for these those videos is there in the description so today we will cover this reactive group which is actually the dermatological diseases that is the skin problems which can involve the skin of the external ear as well so we will cover these one by one today and these includes eczematous otitis externa then seborrheic otitis externa and neurodermatitis this eczematous otitis externa it is usually secondary to eczema somewhere else in the body and at the same time it may be affecting the external auditory canal as well actually this is hypersensitivity to infective organism or to topical ear drops these topical ear drops may be used for the treatment of some other ailment affecting the external ear are the middle ear and the contents of this ear drop the patient may be sensitive to and later on leading to eczematous otitis externa then some predisposing factors or provoking factors have also been mentioned in the stretcher in the literature like excessive sweating we know that some people they they perspire more as compared to others so that can be a predisposing factor then some people may be allergic to some food or to some metals as far as the ear problem is concerned for example during ear piercing some ornaments may be used which are made up of metal the patient may be allergic to emotional stress has also been labeled as a provoking factor or underlying risk factor and it is more commonly seen in those areas where there is low humid climate usual symptom is itching or irritation in the ear and depending upon its stage that if it is acute then there may be some ear discharge with some vesicle formation and this ear discharge will be watery or transparent then some hearing loss is expected due to the blockage of the ear canal from crusting or if there is super added infection then the discharge instead of being clear or transparent it may have become purulent and that pus may be there collected in the external auditory canal blocking the transmission of the sound waves to the middle ear of course there will be history of eczema in the body elsewhere on examination in acute phase of course we expect erythema and edema with some ear discharge which will be transparent or it may be purulent if super added infection is there in chronic phase of course there will be flaking and crusting 
with the eczema in the body elsewhere. So in the treatment, as this is a hypersensitivity to ear drops, for example, topical ear drops or to infective organism or to some ornament or to some food it may be. So we should recognize the allergen and avoid that. It is usually seen in females in case of eczematous otitis externa because they go for ear piercing and usually they, they are more sensitive to nickel or even to some other metal which is used in these ornaments. So if uh, such offending allergen is identified, we should advise the patient to remove that and to avoid it in future as well. Then local ear toilet is must. In case of acute phase, there will be discharge there. We should remove that discharge so that we can apply the ointment topically to the skin directly. And in case of chronic phase, there will be crusting and flakes. Those should be removed and then we should apply the cream there over the skin. Steroid, corticosteroids cream is the mainstay of treatment. Topically, it should be used twice a day to start with for at least 10 to 14 days. And if infection is there, then we can use a combo of steroid with antibiotic cream. It is commercially available. For example, this fusidin with hydrocortisone is available. Uh, this betamethasone with neomycin is available. So th those creams can be used. And as the patient is allergic to or hypersensitive to, then we can use antihistamines, non-sedating, in the form of citrazine or loratadine, once daily dose, more convenient for the patient to use, can be used. And in some chronic cases, there may be ulcer ulceration formation and we have to use the chemical cautery in the form of silver nitrate or there may be the ear canal shape changed. So for that we have to do surgically canal plasty in some cases. Patients should be advised to avoid the scratching of the ears and try to keep the ear moist with the use of olive oil or some cream or Vaseline can be used. So the second entity is seborrheic otitis externa. This seborrheic otitis externa is almost always associated with seborrheic dermatitis of the scalp because the skin which is lining in the neighborhood of the ear in the scalp is the same skin is lining the external ear as well. And this seborrhea, it is very common. In layman term, it is called as dandruff. So it is almost always associated with this seborrhea or dandruff of the scalp. Patient will present with again with the itching and there will be greasy yellow scaling and crusting not only in the external auditory canal but these greasy yellow scales may be there in the pinna, in the post auricular groove and of course in the scalp as well. Oral toilet is again required to remove all these flakes and then we should apply salicylic acid with sulfur 2% cream topically and don't forget to treat the scalp for this seborrhea. So for that we should advise the patient to use the shampoos containing selenium sulfate and nowadays they say that this dandruff or seborrhea actually the causative agent is a fungus, so we should consider using antifungal agent like ketoconazole topically. Patients should be advised to avoid the water entry during swimming or bathing by using the ear plugs. If ear plugs are not available, then they can use cotton plugs soaked in some oil or Vaseline to avoid the water entry. Neurodermatitis, 
this is basically a psychological disorder patient has got underlying some psych psychological problem and there is compulsive scratching he could not resist the scratching of the ears and due to intense itching he feels so he starts scratching that scratching is so forceful that it may cause lacerations or abrasions and the bacteria get entry into and then so secondary infection will also be there so not only we have to deal with the ear disease locally but at the same time we should address that underlying psychological problem so for these patients psychological consultation is must this medicine study of course it is a life long learning and it continues continues and continues any queries or any suggestions mention it in the comments more than welcome thank you very much